the referendum question and both uh, sides of the divide and even more now that we have the different um, calls for referendum and the various players coming out to weigh in on the issues. Let's focus first before we go to the question of taxes on the poll that says 54.3% uh, do not support 45.7% uh, support. Senator, I'll start with you. Your thoughts on that poll and what some of those questions that were put to the, uh, those who were polled, the Kenyans, and what they had to say. Oh, we never thought it was going to be an easy race. And I think just at the, at the onset of introduction of the idea, before we get into the substance, I think uh, for me, politics is about coming from behind sometimes, or many a time. In fact, I remember the first poll that was done when I was running for, when I just had an expression of interest mm -hmm. for the county the kind of senator of Mombasa. I was pulled behind everybody else, you know. I uh, was pulled behind Najib Balala, I was pulled behind Ramadan Saif Kajembe. Then I started seeing a poll increment once you start to disseminate. So we are just at the pace of, uh, of uh, collection of signatures. I think it's too premature to even go into this tandem of how, what polls. So I think uh, we need to start focusing on, on the polling once the, the main issues start to manifest and crystallize. Yeah. That will be at a point at, uh, now right now this is, a, this is just a, 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 the gauge of emotion. But you feel that that's a good one so far? In yeah, as as for me, I, I do feel that they, 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 they is going to be, it's going to be almost territorial in the sense that there will be those who, f who will feel it, particularly in Rift Valley and Central Kenya, that they need to say no. But I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that once the Governor Ruto and his team also start a, a level of campaigns, there, were, there are counties that are most likely to vote for the referendum in mm -hmm. Rift Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, as usual, the, the, the tough that was expected, to, that is the bastion of the code support base, that is Nyanza and Kosbro, Kos region, uh, have held firm. I think there has been, there, so it is, it is premature even to do a referendum of this nature, uh, because I think this, uh, what uh, Honorable Junaid said, if you look at the timetable, it is likely that the earliest we can have the referendum is around July, August, because of the, of the constitutional processes. We submit our referendum bill to the IBC. Mm -hmm. IBC has three months to verify the signatures, uh, you know, polish up on the bill, submit it to the, to the county assemblies. County assemblies have three months uh, to, 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 to vote on. Uh, the whole the, the 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 referendum I mean to vote on the bill the referendum bill yeah, that that already takes us to about six months then after that that in fact that means that also depends on how soon we submit our referendum bill then on account of that then we go to the next uh, to the next frontier mm. so I think by the time we have the referendum it will be July August okay. and I think by that point I am quite confident that uh, that the support uh, for yeah. the referendum and I, you know I'm a person who oh, sometimes believe, believe in empirical research. You don't just criticize something because it doesn't favor you. In fact, if I, if I was foolish at that time when I was running for my campaigns, and I started to criticize that this is not true, that I cannot have. You know the first poll, Sophia, that came to me, I had 7%. Yeah, because I had quite so a number I, of members so, so from poll yes. dismissing this poll and so saying it's not what, true. What we, so we need to, we need to sometimes uh, trust in empirical research, and uh, particularly that which we think is objective. So I think I, I agree with uh, InfoTrack. And I think what we need to do is if we never said it was going to be easy. Anybody would think it was going to be easy. Okay. Uh, Where the, the biggest <coughs> percentage yes, yes. Uh, of those that support Okoa Kenya referendum push, that's 45.7%, yes, yes. is 17.7% which believe it will reduce the cost of living. Yes. And you are completely on the other side saying it will in fact raise taxes or increase the cost of living. Uh, as long as you increase the minimum amount going to the counties. Mm -hmm. You either have to uh, take some of the key functions to the counties or dissolve the go national government or increase taxes. Because the big spenders are still with the go national government and they have to be financed. We, ha we collect 1.2 trillion shillings. Mm. You take about 50% of that to the counties. You leave 50% of that. From that 50%, you must support the level 6 hospitals. You must then pay salaries, which take 30%. You must take security, which takes about 26%. You then have to develop the infrastructure. It will not be enough. The only way, even now, the way it is, there is need to increase the taxes. Although Kenya is the highest tax one of the highest tax countries in the world. So talking about increasing money, leaving the same key functions at the national mm -hmm. level, and then saying it will uh, increase, uh, reduce uh, costs,
the costs will go up. What do you think? Let me tell you, you, think, uh, okay. me tell you, you from yeah. a technical yes. point of view, was that we've had to debate this issue also internally. Right. Article 43, which guarantees every Kenyan the right to basic, basic needs, mm. right to health, right to shelter, food, uh, education, those those very fundamental rights is Article 43 of the Constitution. If you relate this to the devolved functions, then most of these functions fall under water and the rest of it, apart from education, it falls under county governments. So when you increase the capacity of these counties to deliver on these basic services, you will push down the cost of living. Because what we, we want to do also is to create a new framework of law that almost ascribes to the tenets of social democracy that tends to cup and, and, and place obligations on, on governments to progressively appear to realize these rights, the accessibility. So therefore, what will happen, this is a whole framework of evolution or evolution of the re regime of law that governs us. So it's not going to be simply mechan mechanic mechanical that we, since we are going to, we're going to, we, we, the st these functions will still remain the same and we're taking a bit of the money there. Therefore, you know, because for us as, 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 as uh, then the taxes will increase, for us as leaders, it is always about service delivery. Governments are about service delivery. And most of these services now have been translocated into, 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 the, into the framework of, national gov of county governments. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I do appreciate the weather concerns about part of this infrastructure. It is likely uh, that uh, you will need to have more creativity without raising taxes in terms of opening the parameters for, 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 for in terms of the tax base. You, you, because once you, you alleviate poverty, more people get into the tax bracket. So once you develop these counties, these counties will be able to generate more revenue. Most of this revenue that is generated still goes back to national government. So when you develop these units, because right now these units have to literally depend on national government because they're underdeveloped. So in the, long, in, the, in the short, medium term and long term, when you start to develop these units, they become economically viable units. Right, right now, quite a number of counties, I will not many, many mention any, are not economically viable units. So they will start to increase the tax brackets. You go and see what's happening in Wajir. The other day I was in Wajir. A lot more people now in the, are employed by the county government. They have, they've come into the tax bracket. So therefore, it means the county, the government, national government is earning more revenue. And when you develop the infrastructure, you develop all these things, there's almost simultaneous growth. People will start having investor confidence. So you'll be creating frameworks for investor confidence uh, within counties. And therefore, mm -hmm. uh, let's say very soon, Turkana County will be an oil-rich county. Look at what is happening in Lamu. Lamu will start to contribute to the, to the, to the greed of, uh, of, the national, of, of, of the national prism of revenue in matters, manners that we probably we have not foreseen in the past. So I think it, it is, it, 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 this presupposes that the economy will be static. It so on one static. hand, the cost of living will go down, you say. On the other hand, you say governments will need to become creative yes. in getting this money. No, no, listen. I did say creative in the sense that we will be increasing the tax, the tax base. Peop, more people will be brought into the tax bracket because we are expanding avenues for development at the county level. Trust me, it will work. Let me, let me explain as a student of economics. Okay. The the expenses they're talking about, uh, they're assuming that Kenya is an island. Do you understand? And then when they read the constitution, mm -hmm. a right to help, a right to what, they forget that the medicines are bought from outside. They're not developed here. The consumables are imported so that you must be able to generate uh, these funds now, how do you, okay, because our exports are less, how do we generate the foreign exchange? We borrow. We borrow to import oil. We borrow to import medicine. We borrow to import even the TVs you're seeing here, even all this equipment. Now, all those are done by the national government. We owe the international community 800 million shillings. We billion. owe the billion shillings. We owe the internal, the rich people, like Senator here, a trillion shillings. That has to be serviced by the national government. So when you again remove the little money that the national government... Remember when you, you did the, mm. we did the euro bond? It is because the money which is there is not enough. It is, we went to China to beg them and say, come and do the railways. You'll collect your money because we don't have enough. It is like a child in the house reading the riot act saying, we'll be eating sausage bacon it is our right as children milk the way they are doing 
not knowing how much are you earning how much is your income you cannot increase the minimum amount to 45 percent without increasing the tax rate up kenyans will be prepared to pay more for sugar more for milk more for all these things as their senators learn to face to use facebook that is a the fact MCS. that's economics that's not politics yes uh, you'll have to pay that's, that's, in this that again is fear mongering Still one fear -mongering. Thing, I, first and foremost just to qualify i don't qualify for poor neither do i qualify for rich but i can't qualify for the middle uh, which I think is, uh, is wh what we need to bring everybody up to, uh, to the middle. So I know <coughs> that's what we said, we, we want to be a middle, middle income economy by a certain year, 2030. So I think what, what, what I think is... Uh, Why are we what, not what seeing the creative, you're talking about elements of, you know, raising that revenue right now with the county government, so that because, as because it is, see, they're also creating that wealth and not just asking for no, it. No, it's not true, because what has happened, there's, most, there's this thing called equity. In fact, one of the, the things the Constitution wants to achieve is equity. So what is going to happen? We're going to, even when we, when we start to, to go around, part one thing we want to qualify is the government, national government must demonstrate how much in infrastructure they are putting to every county, even that national budget. We, we, we want to see a clear, a, clear, a clear framework of how much is being put to the various counties in terms of infrastructure. How much is Mombasa getting? How much is that Kirinyaga governor getting and not carrying adverts? How much is uh, a lot of other people getting in terms mm -hmm. of uh, into infrastructure? Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is most of these units are yet to become economically viable. Okay. So this is the first investment to, make the, to, make, to, 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 to ensure economic viability. So for the next five, one, two years, these counties are going to guzzle money. They want to guzzle money because they have to start putting the basic framework. You see, like, even, even if uh, uh, Governor Mutu has done, has done more spending, in terms of ensuring that he just builds that in investment confidence to, uh, to try and attract Amar and anybody else to, come, to see the economic viability of Machakos County. If these people do eventually come in, then you will start to see the turnaround. So I think, first and foremost, these, these counties will is, uh, ostensibly guzzle money. And then once, but we want to, sure, to ensure that as we increase our, our economic viability of the various 47 units, the, the various, which, we, which we hope eventually governors will also learn how to run as corporations, then it will be increasing also the tax bracket, not only in terms of revenue collected at the county level, but at the tax revenue at the, at the, at the national level. So it's, Kenya is not going to be static. We, you see the audited accounts they're talking about, for instance, is that of 2009, which is about 600 billion. Yeah, so I'm just mm -hmm. trying to give you a, an indication. Mm -hmm. But right now, Kenya is doing 1.8 trillion. So it has multiplied over years. And I can tell you for a fact, we will, we, this, this generation will, will continue to expand as we, as we let expand. Me explain, let me just explain. Very quickly because we have quite a number. Yeah, let me explain stories. something, Kido. He's talking about the national government should be able to tell us what are they doing, what are they You know what? The national government does a budget, and they have no control on that budget other than these people. They only say, we intend to do the following, and the text to them says, can you approve? Then instead of them looking and saying, and their power to do so, say this you'll do this, this road you'll make, this one you'll not make, this one you'll do, mm -hmm. this you'll not do, they don't do that. They go back and gather themselves as either court or jubilee and start blaming the national government. The, our constitution is such like that when it comes to money, it is parliament deciding you'll spend here, you'll not spend here. Okay? So, and then even the taxation, it is the same assembly, both Senate and the National Assembly, deciding tax here, tax here, tax here. They know that all avenues have been exhausted other than increasing taxes. So what they're asking for will lead to increased taxation. That is period. You take it to the bank and it will happen. Let's talk it, about it what was fact, the, the good thing is that you have <coughs> had that responsibility to us. So at least that's in the court coalition. You're saying it but won't for sure. I, will, I can tell you. Sophia will be here. Back here. Even if let's say I might not. Too late. I can tell you it will not increase taxes. I can tell you we will rationalize it. In fact, if anything, I, for, for us to be able to invest more in the service industry down at the local level, be able to provide certain basic amenities will mean that people will have more access to, 
to, to lie in terms of the, 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 the things that make life uh, dignified. All right. Let's talk about what happened yesterday. The open defiance, some have described it as by Governor Munya in the rally where Deputy President was present. So all this while, Jubilee is working really hard to ensure this um, push for referendum does not gain as much ground as it appears to be gaining. But those in their household as well are not giving them an easy time. What did you make of yesterday? I think, um, as usual, there are times when we do things in the wrong way. This is a political contest. It is not a social contest, it's not an economic, it's a political contest. Mm -hmm. And um, you can see Governor Ruto. There's the hardening of feelings, more because of that kind of pressure, force. I would urge our people, from the present going down, to use those subtle tactics that do not create heroes. To use those tactics that make people understand, including these governors, make them understand this is the situation where we are, this is where we are going. But threatening them, actually there will be, the ones who have gone will be so gone that you can't get them back. Just because you have pushed them. You can, I can see uh, the Jubilee side pushing Ruto, Governor Ruto. They are being, he's being pushed out, out, out. It may be difficult for him to come back. Monia the same. So that action was a mistake. And it will continue. Even on the, the court side. If they were to get, because there are also governors on the court side who are saying we support, we, we don't support the referendum. Now, you, as you can see, the court also saying move, resign. What do you think of Governor Kedero? Uh, Governor Kedero. What does is, he stand is, for? Governor he says that it should be the last uh, uh, resort. Yeah, exactly. We are pursuing it as the last resort. So now, where, you where can see, now, you can see, uh, we can use Governor Kedero in this sense. You can mm -hmm. see where that Raila Odinga is not pushing him, threatening him. Because Governor Kedero represents Nairobi. Nairobi is both cold and jubilee. So occasionally he has to breathe cold and hot. Yeah, because that's it. Okay? He has increased the parking fees and he has seen the consequence. How happy. The, the, the car owners like uh, the senator here are unhappy. So he knows about taxes and he knows this will increase taxes. So he is not supporting it. I can see he's not supporting But he has also his base. So he's breathing hot and cold. 50-50. I, I, I think it's very difficult to know. Now, Dr. it is the court side. Is it? Issue. I'm telling you. Let me tell you. Is it difficult because it's <coughs> a day? day? One day he will come to a court meeting and say a totally separate uh, set of uh, things. What, uh, then the next day, he's somewhere in a public domain. I mm. like him as a person. I, he's my friend. And I think but I support almost... But you're saying he's exhibiting I think some... He, you, you need to be very firm on these issues. You see, in life, you're faced, as Saitote says, you're faced with times in the let. You must take a decision, good or bad. And people, as he said, people respect you for that. Kamotho uh, uh, was, was a respected man, no matter how we, dis we, dis we disagreed with him. Sometimes you need to, to know how to stand alone in life, you know, and that's, that's the test of, of true character. So you can't always try to, to, to be manipulative in a political sense. So I, the like next time, I, I, let, I, there are things that I know. I stand alone on Mombasa. I know that. Mm -hmm. it's not, but, but I say, I say, I say, very, very soon people mm -hmm. come around. I said it the last time here. You see, there's no biryani or, or, or treat for of Madafu if I, you cannot you know, account to us how our brothers and sisters uh, are, are getting lost, particularly the brothers, so to speak, suspects, or getting extrajudicially executed, you know, you will find no, no peace with mm. us. So you, then the, in, in a week's time, in hardly two weeks' time, I am redeemed. You know, somebody is executed in cold blood. So you're saying Governor Kidero needs to come out clear on where he stands? I think he needs to say, yeah, I support the referendum so that or not. But you see, also for the Jubilee, it's a test of their own medicine. They went around trying to spread this dissent within court. Yet, court, you see, the descent of, of the court memberships is just like, you know, it's, it's small. It's people we can. We Why can did you with. call off the Kwale rally? Why was that called off? The, I, from the Kwale rally, if Those. I recall, if I recall, because I know that because the Because it's because minister, of some dissent and some no, members no, no, from court who are not in support of the no, referendum. No, the Prime Minister was supposed to be to go into Kilifi. Mm -hmm. Then, no, to start with um, Taita Tabeta, Kilifi. And then go to Kwale. So what has happened is they, 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 we needed to, to ensure that we, we, we did better planning for that rally because we knew, so trust me, uh, Honorable uh, Suleiman Doria at that time when the Prime Minister intended to come was not around 
and so was Honorable uh, Monyoha. But also there are quite a Mon number of Monyoha. members in that region that do not that's support a, the referendum not, and they're, they're in court. They're all known. We know. We, uh, Moshetane does not support it. Yes. We know Mama Chizuka does not support it. So isn't that the we reason why it was called off to ensure there's two more? members of parliament from, from the court coalition. Leave. Yeah, the, the, from, the, from, the, from, from, from the court coalition. Those are two members of parliament. And I can tell you, Sophia, we'll be here. I want to, come, to be here analyzing the referendum with you when the results start to trickle in. Okay. I'm, I've offered my service to that. I can tell you, if we do not call Kwale, <coughs> Kwale will massively, massively, 90% plus vote for the referendum. I would urge the, court, the, 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 the Jubilee Coalition mm -hmm. to leave out this intolerance. I know, uh, I know, if God pushes Governor Kedero, he will tilt. Just like we pushed, uh, um, Ruto is tilting, we are trying to push, Munya is tilting. So the, the Jubilee side, uh, avoid this intolerance, mm -hmm. as you subtle this promotion. Let's educate our people why this referendum should wait so that the constitution settles so that we do not increase taxes because it goes 45 mm percent -hmm. taxes will be up can i advise uh, the deputy president ruto for free that by the time we go to the referendum more than half of the expectations or even all the expectations people had of his jubilee government being deputy president will not be met if anything i know there are a lot of jitters and murmurs and discontentions governor ruto created his political capital by saying no to the constitution mm. i can tell you for a fact if he is not careful in how he navigates the political terrain, Governor Ruto, I mean Deputy President Ruto, created his political, he took, he took the bull by its horns and said no. I can tell you, Governor Ruto will, will, will be the new center of attraction Rift Valley. in Rift Valley by saying yes, because it is likely to, too that it will attract popular support because of the lack of meeting, mitigating the expectations of his people. And uh, you see, there, there is also discontent. So I think uh, I can tell it for him for free. Sometimes but they're not democracy. getting what it is they negotiated yeah, in the, the pre democratic, democratic standards. You, the, the, the governor, governor Ruto is also the chairman of the governor's council. So we have given him a duality of roles, and that is the position. That's much in the same way uh, when everybody asks me, where, which position does Governor Mvuria stand on, of Kwale? I say, can the vice chair of uh, the, the, the council of governors stand on any other position. He's the vice chair, he's a, he's a, he's a court governor. Okay. So therefore I think the, the people ha carry more than a, a dual it. And as I, as I said, he's the, the governor who's decided to bite the bullet. And he's decided to take that stand. And this stands sometimes, people sometimes, these kind of things can just metamorphose. Before we yeah, move away from... the card yeah. out of the bag. Right. That, that the core intention of this referendum is actually to sabotage the activities of the national government. He has said it. And actually it will. If you are to do it, the national government will not function. Then they would go for, to elections saying, oh, Guru failed, Ruto failed, all these things. That is why we are saying, amending the constitution so that you sabotage others is a wrong motive. Let me tell you should some, be discouraged. Let me tell you my, what my class teacher once told me, why some students fail. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm, I'm here as your teacher. I, I teach you the same. I say the same things. But you, some of you understand them differently. And that's why you, you put your own understanding to it rather than the understanding of the teacher. Then you fail. So I think, that's, so I think what okay. you need to do is to understand what I've simply said. Point made. Uh, finally, the governors, are you talking to them? Because they had to launch their signature uh, collection. And also analysts have argued that for Okoa Kenya, if they did merge with the Pesa Mashinani, it would be a home run. So are you talking, are you engaging, hoping to be on the same boat? Uh, Although a, some Jubilee have already it's, said it's, it's just an approach from different corners, but you're already uh, on the same... Uh, page it's, it's it's desirable like what in mombasa we've done yeah. because mombasa is a flagship we we try to redefine process our actually our slogan you have to realize uh, some of our some of our governors that we some of our supporters are governors mm. so governor murutu governor 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 joho uh, governor mvuria are both governors and also co both uh, court members so in fact if you see our slogan we say referendum okoa kenya pesa mashinani so it will be desirable for this team to be one team in the long run. But I, I, I would first and foremost say because of the diverse issues also they might have that might not complement one another, okay. it will be important to see whether they can, they can initiate their campaign for the sanctity of their own process first. And then it, it, I think this, this, this referendum might merge at the point of IBC. Once you have your, coll your signature collection and then you have a referendum bill 
emanating from the two sides, they are likely that they will not be dissimilar. They will be very they will be similar similar bills, and therefore it is at that point that can be there can be a round of negotiations okay. whether this bill can be the same Mukwa Kenya Pesa Mashinani bill. Speaking of IEBC, the discussion around the election date has come back, and uh, <laughs> you've had the views of, uh, I'm sure in the re in the recent past, and they're arguing if that is to happen, we must go to again a referendum for that to happen. And a big concern and it's not been talked about much is the question of the term uh the terms of the commission as that expires in november so that if then the change comes to the, the election date to december it's a whole question of then do you have new commissioners who are what a month or so old to conduct an election what's that with you weather you need a referendum that i was asked last time and mm -hmm. I, you need to amend the election date you need a referendum <coughs> okay i think they they, 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 are, they are hoping they would go round but you need a referendum yes other than that then you'll have commissioners who are very new because there's a new commission with new things uh, that again would not go well for this country especially when members of parliament just want an extra five months so you feel that's the motivation behind that's the, the motivation. whole there's push nothing else update. this thing of hey, christmas we are, we are supposed to school calendar and a co calendar and what is there tourism election is two days then you mm. one day then you count but they want the extra six months but, but. and that when the the, the august date was decided it, had, it was as a result of a, a lot of deliberations several things were taken into account mm -hmm. that is why i also say that if we start by amending this will be a Raila amendment. Okay? Code. Code Raila Kenya. Code amendment. Mm -hmm. Code. Then there will be a President Uru amendment to the Constitution. Then there will be a President, uh, Deputy President, uh, ka incoming President Ruto. Whatever uh, uh, will also do. If we open this Constitution now to one ton amendments, it is easy to begin. But there will be no end. Okay. The only way to end is to say Kenyans. Let the constitution do about 20, 30 years. Then we have a constitutional conference saying this area and this area needs to be made. Otherwise, this thing of court, whatever, 45% is to sabotage in, the country. In, in institutions of commissions are institutions. They, they, they should be able to outlive mm -hmm. commissioners. I was a commissioner myself. So I, we create institutions. In fact, for me, the incentive of supporting the change of the election date is because these commissioners will stand move office comes to an end in November. And I can tell you as a commissioner, these commissioners, their first few months are, the, are, the, are their honeymoon months. It's their, they are the <coughs> best months of any, of any person who's appointed to public office. Because there's this capital, the public capital on your side, you, you want to so deliver. You want honeymooners to, to conduct an election? No, 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 I'm telling you. I'm telling you that was, that was the best time before you, you crystallize and settle into partisan interests. And I am confident that if the IBC will be an institution with systems, any commissioner who comes in November can conduct an election in December. Really? That I can tell you for, for free. That I can tell you as long as this, there are systems. Uh, then if, but if you create in, in, in individuals, then, then definitely you will, not get, you will not get the desired results. But secondly, I think uh, Weda is right on this one. I, I told him I'm not an insincere politician. I've had the, the, the debate. It's about our terms of office becoming being very short. But you know, there is a point at which we must make this constitution work. That's my view. If you, because if we extend our term of office, then the next people will say our term of office is short. So at what point will there be catch up? So I think we as the inaugural parliament must make that sacrifice that our terms of office are going to be a sizable eight months shorter, even probably a year shorter. Because we, if, if, if you are to go for an election in August, you probably prorogue parliament sometime in June or July. No, in fact, June, desirably, mm. end of June. Mm. So it means we will have lost it about 10 months because we were sworn in in April of the election year of 2013. So we will have lost out. But I think somebody, we need to make that sacrifice. Because think we are putting in a new system. Okay, so back to the commissioners, you're saying that in your opinion and based on the past and how our elections have been uh, conducted, you believe that a fresh team of commissioners can be put in place in a month and conduct an election of the magnitude that we now have following the promulgation of the constitution. Because I want to believe, before the, the commissioners exit, I want to believe that these are institutions. 
But it's not staggering. They're all going they're out not, in yes, one Yes, absolutely. But there is a institutional go. memory in the form Where of our secretariat. It? The no, secret, no. In fact, those of us who have been in commissions mm -hmm. seldom understand, and many people out there seldom understand, is that it's the secretariat, the technical experts. We are just simply policy makers. We simply sit in a commission meeting and steer the, the institutional direction. But in the technical sense, they have, every commissioner has programs, they are programmatic staff, there is the chief executive of the commission and stuff like that. So I personally believe, yeah, the doable. way I look at institutions, there is absolutely no reason why a commissioner cannot be appointed on 1st of November and conduct an election on 27th of, of December. I, I don't know. I, 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 right. A democracy like Kenya, yes. the elections are being conducted by somebody who's still busy receiving his or her congratulatory messages. And brief. And brief saying, oh, thank you, oh, thank you, oh, we are glad to see you there. He's still making himself for the newspapers and, and the TVs. Let us take this election seriously. You are complaining that there was rigging on your part. Now, again, when you lose round one, you say, these people are new, they didn't know. Let it We are settle. between a rock and a hard place. We have the same IBC, so I'm trying to choose between... Finally, the, I can the, the say theory, that... The theory of the lesser evil. Well, the lesser finally, evil, I can say is this. Do you go with the Ahmed Isaac team, or do you, do, you, do you invest you your hope in a new team? You just put all those, all those in, questions, in, in, all of them, it will be like an exam, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, an exam, and then we'll tell Kenya, throw all this examination out. Then Kenya moves. Those who will lose for 10 months, you can make a law so that uh, we give you a token as you go home. The but otherwise, the constitution there's has no to There's no need for a token. I think the election should be in Just August. to persuade you people to stop the, interfering the second, with the constitution. The second Tuesday of August, that is my position. Because I have had the debate, it's about our time is going to be shorter. Yeah. There should be no financial incentive to that. They agree. Uh, they should they be, support. They, because at some point, the constitution must, must start to synchronize itself. And therefore, I think that is, the, that is what, what ideally we must do. And therefore, I have no issues, absolutely, okay. having the elections in August. Let's touch on land a bit. Uh, and NLC chair comes out to say that, in fact, after the investigations, they will be repossessing the half a million acres of land. And also, an interesting twist to all this, a new development of the state lodges that have part of their land grabbed. Mm -hmm. So these grabbers are taking this whole grabbing uh, of land even to uh, state lodges. Your thoughts on uh, the f <laughs> what the NLC found? Because in Initially, there was an issue of does a person even have a right to direct them to investigate? You see, the NSC actually is in charge of public land, in charge of public and trust land. Yes. For the 24 years that Moy was in power, we had a penchant for grabbing public land. When I left college, I didn't know that you buy land. I knew that you get close to the Kano <laughs> operatives, and then you are located land. So I wasted so long hoping that where are my friends within Kano to allocate me land. So that, that blood of theft of public land is still there. Yes. Okay? And uh, we thank God that um, the law is such that to acquire public land, the process is so tedious. And the courts have declared, if you don't follow that process, then you have not gotten it. You have gotten a piece of paper. So those who grab state house, those who grab land, wherever they are, they should know that that process is tedious you can't get the national land commission also got it wrong instead of concentrating on their command they were busy struggling who is signing the title deeds who is doing this and this and this? Yeah. now i think they are they are now entering into their command it and that is a good thing and we support them okay senator i, I think uh, and orango should also I think, tell uh, us how i think uh, we need to give constitutional Diligence. I mean, constitutional recognition to the uh, to those who have certain duties and mandates. I think what the National Commission was saying it's not that the land was not grabbed. Yes. They were saying that 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 that, that uh, any mandate around repossession or anything else properly rests in them. So they they took the letter from the president as a petition, and therefore they evaluated the petition on the basis of that framework of independence and they thought maybe they, 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 they found that they need to reprocess that land. Mm. And that's how the constitutional process works. That's why you need to wait for the court to tell you, you know, uh, to blow up the sheep. It's as simple as that. Putting, don't put the cat before the horse. Or, so that, that, I think what you need to do is to respect the institutions that are there. As a, govern, as a governor, as a member of public service, you are, or as a president, you are governed by a constitutional democracy. That's why now this whole thing I talked about last, last two weeks ago is, is, is creating Uru Kenyatta a nightmare. The courts 
castigated it. They said it was a tantamount to, to, to a blow on the, 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 the rule of law. The high court castigated it. The law society castigated it. And all these lawyers around Hukri Kenyatta cannot emphasize to him on the fidelity of the law. Thirdly, it, the matter has been raised in the ICC. I read it in one of the dailies yesterday, one of the newspapers yesterday. It's simple. Just respect the law. That's what we're asking. So the National Land Commission simply is the commission mandated. And look, they have validated his, his, his allegations. All they need, what he needs to do as a president is to realize that he, he petitions the National Land Commission. And therefore, it would have been a magnanimous event for him, even a, a victory for constitutionalism, if he had been flanked by commissioners rather than a political, uh, uh, you know, who, what's, uh, Gilu, and, and shown through independence and constitutional structure that they have actually revoked this title on the basis of a, of a very judicious process. All right, our time is up. Yes. Uh, in less than a minute, the poll that says that the first lady, we don't talk about her much, enjoys more confidence than all politicians pretty much, and in serious institutions, the legislature, uh, judiciary, parliament, what do you think? I, 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 well, the first time I ever met the first lady, she yeah. had done a lot of public functions. Yes. I stretched out my hand to her, and I told her, I think you're extremely articulate. She I, is. I think it's really uh, a breath of fresh air, and I think the poll is a reflection of reality, because I think we also need to, to be very respectful. Mm. Uhuru Kenyatta is the politician, not Margaret Kenyatta. And I think she has engaged herself in social issues, social, I mean, she has profiled, be, 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 I think, beyond imagination, the office of a first lady. Uh, and therefore, it is even brought to question whether the first lady is in the county going to do. Yeah. I think she has set the standards high. Very and high. I think she's. But I, I need also to, to, to say that I will not be here next Monday. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I will be traveling okay. today, tonight to, to, to Germany uh -huh. um, with uh, the governor of Mombasa County and the governor of Busia County and the prime minister. So we'll be taking a one week. Uh, uh, where we'll have uh, both uh, of uh, bureaucratic of official meetings and that to the business community. So I'll All be away best. with the Prime Minister. All the best for with the that. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think the... Um, for 24 years under Moy, mm. we didn't have a first lady. <laughs> then uh, the 10 years under Kibaki, we had, we had a first lady who was breathing hot and cold. Yes. So... Uh, the first lady, um, uh, Mrs. Kenyatta, has come. She's fairly level. And then she got uh, the right thing. When she went for the, 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 the London Marathon. Mm -hmm. That was huge. We said, this one is the fellow. And then she doesn't seem to be pulling political strings. So she's called. But comparing her to politicians is using the wrong parameters. Okay. If today she declares she wants a seat, Will there be still as much support? She should actually be compared to, let's say, influential figures. people, figures in the okay. country. But well. saying uh, this and that, <laughs> the moment you go into the well, political field, it becomes a problem. One. All right. Thank you both yes, thank uh, you. very much. Remember the last time you had yeah. this cough that was bugging you and you told, us, no. you told us that uh, you took some medicine? That was I was told it would take good. three weeks. Yes. So because today we are focusing on that because yes, it's a very serious problem in Kenya, counterfeit medicine. But, but please, Sophia, he, he will be alone next <laughs> Monday. Please contain him. No, there will be somebody. Uh, we will get no, somebody. I, I, I hope you are not spending the county funds. You <laughs> I, not, I don't know. I have not paid for the prime minister, who is a former prime minister, civilian. Trust me, the people who invited I hope he has paid for himself. He's covered all the costs.